Hey everybody, welcome back to History Student Reacts. Today, we'll be doing something a little different. We will be watching episode 1 of HBO's Rome. That's right, we're doing a TV show today. Now, this is not something I've done before. We've reacted to exclusively YouTube videos on this channel up until this point. But, after doing so much Roman history, I've gotten a couple of recommendations for different shows to do. One of them being HBO's Rome. Now, this is the first time I'm doing something like this. I imagine we may have some issues with the copyright, so give me a little bit of leeway there. This is going to be more edited than the usual videos, though, if you want to see the whole thing unedited, please go check out the Patreon, which is linked in the description. Now, I'm not coming at this aiming to correct anything that they've gotten wrong or be one of these guys who just, you know, writes everything down and compares it to the real world. That's not the angle from which I'm coming at this. I want to watch the show, react to it, and maybe point out some things here or there. That's what I'm aiming to do. You know, I just want to give it a shot. Seems like reacting to HBO's Rome would be a pretty fun time, given all of the Roman history, particularly the late Republican Roman history that we've done together. So, I'm very excited to jump into this first episode of the series. Uh, if you guys enjoyed this one, please let me know. That lets me know that you want to see more, and we can continue this series. Anyway, I uh, hope you guys are ready to jump right in, because I am. So let's go. Rome. All right, here we go. I'm excited. The balance of power is shifting, and the nobility have grown fearful. Mm. Though of noble blood himself, Caesar stands with the common people. A man like that... An aristocrat with soldiers, money, and the love of the people might make himself king. Yep, Caesar was a reformer. Uh, at this point, judging from how they're describing it, he's still a bit of an upstart, but he's collected a lot of political power. Pompey has the more established career. He's a great general. But one of the reasons he joined up with Caesar and Crassus is because he was struggling to get his political agenda done. Caesar, though he has to force his agenda through, certainly does get it done. He's popular with the people, the plebeians, even though he is a patrician elite, he's a reformer, he's a populist, and he's embarking upon some of his most impressive conquests in Gaul, which will build his military career. So, Pompey and Caesar, allies, friends, but Caesar is increasingly becoming more and more of a threat. The legions at work. The whistle. I, I haven't seen that before. Is those is that one of the tools they actually use to communicate on the battlefield? I'm sure you guys know. Get back in formation, you <laughs> drunken fool. <laughs> Oh, Jesus. There's that famous Roman discipline. <laughs> ah. Caesar's camp, 52 BC. Before you, Vercingetorix, son of oh. Keltil, chieftain of the tribe of the Averni. My goodness, we're beginning with the surrender of Vercingetorix, uh, as we have seen in our story civilist reactions he was really one of caesar's more impressive foes perhaps his greatest foe amongst the gauls he commanded a confederation of different gallic tribes fought back strongly and smartly against caesar but in the end he was defeated For the rebel stronghold of Elysia. damn and they would keep Vercingetorix in prison for years after this to much later parade him through Rome during a triumph and then he would be executed. Uh, and also a note on the Caesar. Uh, from my understanding of Latin, um, they actually pronounced it as Caesar, uh, more close to the, you know, the German pronunciation of Caesar, right? Uh, but we pronounce it Caesar and that's what they're doing here. I don't have much of a problem with it. I mean... I pronounce it Caesar, even though it's not the most accurate pronunciation. The chief of the Gauls has surrendered to Caesar. The boys have been given two days' liberty to sack the town and take personal spoils. And me in here? <laughs> hey! Pay the usual premium for 
tradesmen and fertile women, etc. Uh, I mean, by looting, we're of course talking about looting goods, taking all the riches these people had. But also, we're talking about enslaving a large chunk of the population. Uh, many of them have already died in combat, many of the fighting age men, and so a lot of the women and children, as we're seeing, will be sold into slavery. Uh, it's a nasty business, but very common. News from Rome? Pompey writes, My daughter Julia has died in childbirth. A child? A girl, stillborn. I mean, that's got to be some incredibly tough news to receive, um, particularly in this sort of environment. You're on campaign. I mean, you can see the lack of privacy. Caesar has all these matters to attend to, and he has to deal with this sort of grief. Um, it's a tough situation. Pompey will be needing a new wife. And the political maneuvering of it all. <laughs> Oh, we can see Caesar's pretty popular. Uh, I think we're also seeing a fairly accurate depiction of the dress of the time. Now, I am no expert, but what I do know is that when a lot of people think of this era, they think about white togas. Everyone's wearing white togas, but that was not true. Not true at all. Um, and from what I know, this seems like a little more of an accurate depiction of what most people would have been wearing most of the time. What a dreadful noise plebs make when they're happy. <laughs> this is music. Wait until Caesar starts them howling for our blood. Mm-hmm. Then you'll hear something dreadful. <laughs> Got some patrician elites right there. Wow. Look at that. The streets brought alive with action and trading and mules and horses as it would have been. Incredible. Pompey Magnus and Julius Caesar. Senate sits tomorrow. Be mm. aware. No disorder will be tolerated. You know, a sort of town crier, although that's more of a medieval concept, but reading the news out to everybody. I'm not sure what the literacy rate was in ancient Rome. I mean, there was a um, decently large educated population, but I imagine a lot of people either couldn't read or couldn't read very well. And so you would make proclamations out in the open, verbal proclamations like this, so everybody would get the news. Uh, that is particularly if you wanted the people to know the news, which, given Caesar's populist political leanings, he often did. Okay. This is also not going on YouTube. Oh my. It is pretty crazy that they're just surrounded by, well, most likely slaves and or servants while they are going at it. <laughs> Octavian? There he is. As a youngin. I've bought a horse. Have you? <clears throat> the best horse in Rome by all accounts. I'm very happy for you. That's a gift for your great uncle. I want you to take the animal to Gaul. And give it to him in person. Jesus. It's a long way to go. Eggs. Very fascinating. We're already getting a look at Octavian. Um, very sort of calm, level-headed. Also, we saw a bit of his brutality there, slapping a slave, presumably. Um, I'm very excited to see Octavian throughout this series. How he evolves, how he stays the same, what he achieves. Um... It also looks like we're getting a pretty close look at, you know, slavery <laughs> and class dynamics in Roman life, which I think is something often ignored when we talk about the history. Um, because oftentimes we talk about history from a very zoomed out perspective, but as we can see, these things were extremely prevalent in daily life, and they would be hard to avoid if you were doing a show like this, but nonetheless, uh, I appreciate so far how it's being presented. Uh, we'll see how the rest of the series goes. We're a couple minutes into the first episode. <laughs> exactly. While yet a mere boy, you would risk your life to honor your beloved great-uncle. You ride into Caesar's camp alone on a noble white stallion. That's a gift you won't soon forget. Alone? You have plenty of slaves. You'll be perfectly safe. <laughs> alone. 
Plenty of slaves. We can already see, by the way, Octavian's mother sort of scheming, trying to get him into Caesar's good graces, while, at least in this rendition, Octavian seems a little less enthusiastic, though eventually he will be on board with this plan. The plan of getting Caesar's favor, at least. Whoa. Hey, Magnus. Oh, it's Cato. I have a question concerning your friend and co-consul, the darling of Venus. Gaius Julius Caesar. Why does his chair remain empty? Why does he not come home? Why does Caesar keep his brave soldiers from their families and friends? Oh, this is a great depiction. I'm, we've got a lot to see. I'm already enjoying this depiction of the Roman Senate. The jeering, the yelling back and forth. Uh, you know, the, the name calling, the, all of this kind of stuff. Uh, it's very petty. Uh, that's what it seems like already. Uh, the conservatives willing to take any jab at Caesar. Um, I'm enjoying this. Let's go on. Why has he paid the debts of every reprobate fool in this Senate House? Why? <laughs> the conservatives versus the populists? He wants to buy himself a crown. He wants to destroy the Republic and rule Rome as a bloody tyrant. That's why. Yeah, a good depiction of Cato, um, one of the spokesmen for the conservative faction, one of the most hardline conservatives in the Roman Senate. In the long run, I'm not much of a fan of Cato, talking of the real history, of course. Um, I, I think he was pretty foolhardy, unwilling to compromise, but that's what made him him. Um, and one of Caesar's greatest political enemies, as we can see here, Though, in this case, he is right. <laughs> uh, he's looking pretty long-term. Well, he's just taking jabs at Caesar, but he will end up being right. Therefore, I move that Caesar's governorship in Gaul be terminated immediately, that his armies be disbanded, and that he be recalled to Rome to answer charges of illegal warfare, theft, bribery, and treason. So very partisan. Very relatable. <laughs> Very good, Cato. Full of vim and verve as usual. Caesar has been generous to the people because mm. he loves the people as I do. Yeah, it's really interesting to see, obviously, down the line, Pompey and Caesar will be the greatest of enemies, but Pompey defending Caesar, which of course he did during the Triumvirate, they were allies, and Pompey defending Caesar sort of on his own terms using the populist message, which I, I very highly doubt Pompey believes in at all. <laughs> I don't think Pompey was a man of much belief. Um, but, you know, it's interesting to see that rhetoric being thrown around. And this environment, like I said, uh, I think it's very familiar to many of us today, whether you're thinking about Congress or, in particular, parliamentary systems like the British Parliament. We see a lot of this same type of behavior. <laughs> Are we children? Let the consul speak. Who is this? Ah. Not, however, oh. I might say a few words before you continue. <laughs> Typical. When confronted by a hungry wolf, it is unwise to goad the beast as Cato would have us do. But it is equally unwise to imagine the snarling animal a friend and offer your hand. As Pompey does. Perhaps you would have us climb a tree. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone love that one. <laughs> Caesar is my brother by sacred oath. I know his heart. He is my friend and a faithful son of the Republic. And mm -hmm. until anyone proves that he is not, I will never betray him. That was a great scene. I love that. Pompey Magnus, my dear fellow, you're well met. You know my daughter, Cornelia. Father, my presence is not appropriate. There's a lewd woman on the stage. I had no notion. We will not linger then, Pompey. <laughs> I had no notion. Yeah, okay, man. Um, a lot of content which is not ended up on YouTube. Uh, you know, uh, this would get the video age restricted immediately. But once again, we're getting a good look at some. Um, I would say regular Roman life, uh, the pleasures, the entertainment that Romans enjoyed. 
uh, in their daily lives. Stuff that we might not think about very often. If it please you, might we speak alone? Neither we aristocrats alone, nor you and your soldiers alone can cross Caesar. I have no need of you noble gentlemen. I've only to stamp my feet, and legions will spring up all over Italy. Mm. I can squash Caesar like an insect. Yeah, here we go. This is more the real Pompey, at least as I interpret him. <laughs> He's not a man of the people, as he was talking earlier. He's not even a man of ideology. He's a man of power and authority. And I think we're getting a real close look at that right here. Renounce him, Pompey. Renounce Caesar. Ally yourself with us and his strength will wither away. Not true. You asked me to openly betray a friend. But if you think that, you know, betray Caesar and eventually you will be the favorite of the people and Caesar with his trinkets will go away, that is delusional thinking, not true. I cannot do it. Good night. Oh, Cato. But this is typical Cato. <laughs> Octavian. Silly baby brother. Do we have Octavia here, maybe? Roman men are never scared. He's just sad to be leaving his mama. You're not scared, are you, Octavian? So young. Well, off he goes. Andros, bring him back safe, or I'll use the eyes of your children for beads. <sighs> Jesus, the uh, brutality of everyday life. Wow, look at that view. I'm sorry, sir. The horse was sold already <clears throat> to Attia of the Julii. She's mm. sending it to Gaul, a gift for Caesar. Damn him! Must he have everything? Look at camp. Oh, jeez. Uh-oh. Let me look at you. As ugly as ever, I'm afraid. What do we have here? A huh. suits you, Brutus. Oh. How long has it been? Five years? No, six. Now tell me, how's your mother? Same as ever. She sends her love, demands to know why you haven't written to her in months. Brutus, me old cock. <laughs> what on earth are you doing here? Oh, Mark Antony, how nice. Oh. Now, I've been visiting my... We are really setting up some characters here. We got Brutus coming in, Mark Antony. Um, I mean, you can sort of understand the storytelling. We're getting a lot of characters who will be very important down the line, and a lot of characters who will be directly opposed down the line. Uh, not to mention, also, gosh, we can see how young Octavian is compared to these two. I don't know how accurate that was. I, I do think Octavian was quite a bit younger than the rest of them, um, and I think this is trying to show that going from Octavian to these two. I need, say, a half talent of gold. Do you? See how he trusts me. For the eagle. Of course. Strabo! <laughs> Give us honor, Mark Antony, a half talent of gold. A half talent of gold. And not a penny more. <laughs> <laughs> Typical Mark Antony. What is this about the eagle? My personal standard was stolen by brigands. Oh. That, that is a bad business. That is quite dishonorable. Uh, the Roman Eagle standard, very important. Um, I mean, of course, the practical idea is that it brings men together on the battlefield. You can see it. Everyone gathers around it. But with a symbol like that, of course, it becomes more than just a practical item. It becomes, well, like I said, a symbol. It means a lot to the Romans. Whenever they lose an Eagle standard, that's a big deal. And so to lose one in this way, Caesar's definitely going to want it back. The legions were already homesick and surly when the eagle was taken. Now they're positively mutinous. I'm at my wit's end. Master Octavian. Poor little Octavian. Uh -oh. oh no. I will say, um, there is a famous journey Octavian made to go see Caesar. But I, I'm not sure if this particular trek up to Gaul is a real event or if it's more an interp uh, interpolation of events that actually happened, you know? I think more the general idea of what Octavian's doing is authentic, but I'm not sure if, 
like I said, this particular march up to Gaul to go meet Caesar uh, actually happened. Maybe some of you can tell me down below. Like I said, I do know that there was this famous journey Octavian made to go see Caesar, but I believe that was in Hispania. Um, though maybe this was a different instance. I don't know. Lucius Varinus. So tell me, if it were you had to retrieve Caesar's eagle, how would you go about it? take captives from every tribe in Gaul and crucify them one by one until someone tells me where the eagle <laughs> is. Then I would go in quick and quiet with one or two men and steal it back. Good. How Roman. You are of one mind. Do it. There's a court of talent there for bribes and such. <laughs> I can kind of tell the portrayal of Mark Antony they're going for. Um, maybe it'll be different throughout the series. I will say, Mark Antony was known to be talented in terms of military affairs. I do also think of him as a bit of a buffoon generally, so, you know, this is kind of accurate. <laughs> At least to my interpretation of Mark Antony. But maybe that'll be a little different throughout the series. I don't know. Crucifixion. Made famous, of course, by Jesus, but used for a while by the Romans. The blue Spaniards, they came to stay for one night. Fortune pisses on me. Take them down. <laughs> Boss, we just put him up. <laughs> Legionary Titus Pulo, stand up. You are to be released to the command of Second Spear Centurion Lucius Varinus. These orders come direct from His Excellency Mark Antony himself. You are to retrieve Caesar's eagle. <laughs> this guy seems unreliable. <laughs> Cerulea, <laughs> mother of Brutus, lover of Caesar. And Caesar? He did write you a letter, though. Dearest Cerulea, forgive my long silence. Be sure that I have been thinking of you with great affection. Look, Caesar's a busy man. Oh, she's happy. Look at her. She's happy. She can't help herself. Please yourself. Only trying to be pleasant. My mother's. Interesting. We've. Got this little sideshow of these two fellas, an odd couple. Um, Varanus, I think it was, upright. And then Polo, who is uh, rowdy, unreliable, but uh, must be a pretty talented soldier. We saw him at the beginning, and that's why he's needed here, I suppose. What do you think our chances are of finding the eagle? Thirteenth never fails, eh? Little or no chance. The eagle might be anywhere. <laughs> of course, you have to imagine... So Long hair down to here, huge moustaches, the most terrific stench. The Gauls. Oh, they do have one admirable custom. They settle their political disputes by a single combat to the death. I mean, we're seeing the opinions of the Roman patrician elite, to specify Italian patrician elite, uh, the opinions of them on the Gauls. They think they're barbarians, what did he say, smelly, all that kind of stuff. No respect there. Of course, eventually, the Gauls, some of the Gauls, the Gallic elites, will be brought in as senators by Caesar. And even later on, the Gauls and others will be included into Roman citizenship. But I think we're seeing a pretty accurate portrayal of Roman elite opinion at this time. <laughs> now, you see, if our Senate conducted business in the German style, I should certainly go and watch. You know, no tedious lawsuits, endless debates, just swords, daggers. How much more? Brutus. A word. Yeah, you're gonna get what you wish for, Brutus. <laughs> How is my dear friend Caesar? That's a little demoralized. Caesar demoralized? No. <laughs> I think Poppy has played him like an absolute fool right now. His men are in uproar about it. They're desperate to come home. Mutinous. I had heard there was some discontent. Mutinous. Hard to. <laughs> Brutus. What a buffoon. <laughs> my dear niece. I hope you and the children are well. I have a task for you. Policy dictates I give a new wife to Pompey. Where's Octavian? He's in Gaul. Oh. He certainly is. <laughs> yeah, I don't believe this ever happened. As far as I know, maybe I'm wrong. But I've never heard about Octavian getting captured as a child by a bunch of Gauls. I mean, a religious ritual of some kind. 
Holy. Can't show that on YouTube. <laughs> the bull just got sliced open. <laughs> I mean, animal sacrifice is a very Roman thing to do. Part of many rituals and ceremonies. Mother says no harm shall come to your boy. Tell me now. How goes your marriage? There were some difficulties in the past, but we overcame them. Uncle Julius intends to marry you to Pompey Magnus. I mean, that's not quite what Uncle Julius said. I will not do it. I love my husband. If you do not divorce Glabius willingly, then Caesar will ask Glabius to divorce you. This is... Well, this is Roman politics. This is Julii family politics. Um, you know, there were love in marriages sometimes. Sometimes people would marry out of love, but far more often we see political alliances being made through marriage. Many examples of this in Roman history. Uh, and, of course, many other histories. Try to look a little more cheerful, Octavia. I mean, Octavia is going to be another important character throughout this entire series. Someone who we will follow. I mean, Octavian is, of course, remembered. Um, he will become Augustus. But Octavia is perhaps a little less well-known, but very important as well. And I and your brother are alone in the world. We have to be strong. We're not alone. Caesar is, Caesar is in Gaul. Pompey is here. Now, I mean, that is an accurate point. Caesar is in Gaul. He is the standard bearer for the Julii family at this moment. So the rest of them have to handle affairs while he is gone, right? Um, of course, an arranged marriage of this sort... It's a pretty sad thing to see if one party isn't really consenting, which Octavia isn't. She's been coerced. But, like I said, this was a pretty common tactic used to cement alliances. I sent in my cavalry reserve and outflanked the flankers. Poppy talking about old victories. Bravo, Magnus. Masterly. <laughs> Is he not, Octavia? Masterly. Does my daughter please you? Very pleasing, no doubt. Then I can tell you that Caesar, as a token of his abiding friendship, would like to offer her to you in marriage. Ah. Um. No hiding there. She just said it straight up. Uh, very honest about the political nature uh, of this marriage proposal. Though, well, I guess we'll see how this is going to go. I don't want to spoil anything, so we'll just watch. Excuse me, I was taken unawares. We would have to wait until next month for an actual ceremony, of course. But you may take your betrothal privileges any time you wish. Wow. Now, if you like. Really, that's not necessary. And, I mean, I'm sure y'all can read between the lines, but um, Atia is trying to go for an heir. You know, to really cement the alliance between Poppy and the Julii family, they want an heir birth from both bloodlines. And so she's being very forward about it, even though <laughs> Octavia is clearly incredibly uncomfortable. And I think Poppy's pretty uncomfortable, too. <laughs> a lot of nudity in this first episode. <laughs> I suppose it is a, a drama, though. I have a wife now. I see. Centurions can marry that. I received a special dispensation. A special hmm. dispensation? She must be some good woman. Yep. Well, I mean, once again, we're definitely getting sort of the two sides of Roman culture. Upright, honorable, seemingly loyal to his wife, which is rare. Very rare. Perhaps more the idea that the Romans would think of themselves. And then more coarse, down-to-earth. Um, interesting. Interesting dichotomy. You're on first watch. Wake me when the moon's at the zenith. <laughs> First watch. Okay. Oh, wow. Well, it just got a lot worse for them, too. Like, a lot worse. Yeah, you just messed up big time, my friend. They weren't such good horses anyway. My people fought at Zaman Magnesia. My father mm. rode with Sulla, and I'm rejected. Oh, my. Unhorse a lot of references there. Zama, Sulla. Um, Sulla, of course, a very famous figure of Roman history. Zama, very famous battle. I won't get into them, but a lot of stuff to pick up on here. 
this video will be long enough <laughs> without me going into absolutely everything they say. Oh shit. <laughs> it's Octavian. Yeah, th this can't have happened, right? No match for Roman soldiers, eh? Look here, Mars. Look here, Mars. Mm. I'm Titus Pullo. These bloody men my gift to you. Roman got a war. I order you to release me this instant. I'm Gaius Octavian of the Julii. Say please. <laughs> please. Humbling Octavian. Yeah, Octavian was very brutal. Uh, this is sadistic, but I think at times he could be sadistic at times. So there's definitely some truth to this behavior. Be assured you will be amply rewarded for your services to me. Actually, losing the eagle is useful to Caesar. <laughs> Why would that be useful to Caesar? Because Pompey is no deep philosopher. He will take a symbolic loss for a real weakness. Explain. Smart boy. Caesar doesn't want to strike the first blow against an old friend. So he wishes to lure Pompey into attacking him first. And this is another thing that is... This is very accurate in terms of Octavian. The sadism, partially true. Uh, he may not have been as sadistic as that, though he was pretty brutal. But this... Octavian was very intelligent. He was an intelligent political operator. He was calm and level-headed. Uh, he didn't bring emotion into his decisions, which is perhaps why he could be so brutal. He, he had very little emotional attachment, and they're doing a good job of showing that intelligence here. Caesar has taken the love of the common people from Pompey, and that was his most prized possession. A battle is inevitable. Wow, quite a prediction. Yep, there you go. Come on, man. Wow. How about that? And hey, even if Caesar didn't care about finding that eagle standard, it is better to bring it back. I mean, that is going to make the men happy. And bring Octavian back. Double whammy. Varinus is getting promoted. That's a shock. Cave here. <laughs> oh. One of Pompey's men. I misjudged him. Oh my. I it would take strategy to turn him against me, but he must have turned the moment Julia died. The battle begins. We can see that tension brewing between Pompey and Caesar, and in fact, at this point, it's more than tension. Once again, I'm not sure about the historical accuracy of that particular event, but that's not really what matters. I think the authenticity is there. You know, we can see the conflict between the two as they drift apart and Caesar continues to rise and Pompey, he hasn't fallen, but he is not rising like Caesar is. Uh, Caesar's out campaigning. Pompey sees him as a threat. Conflict is slowly building. Oh. Poor oh, could you know? Dearest Pompey, I believe the enclosed man <laughs> belongs to you. What a, a gift. Quick note to tell you, I have decided to winter the 13th Legion closer to home <laughs> at Ravenna. Oh, that's a lot closer. Ravenna will be an important city in the future. Ah. And also, I, I mentioned earlier how I like how the people are clothed. Seems more accurate to how Rome actually was. In addition, if you look at the buildings, it's not fully accurate, but they've got a little closer to accuracy than the common perception of Rome. We think of Rome as this city of white marble, no color, austere. Not true. As you can see, a lot of the buildings were actually painted in a rather gaudy fashion. Um, and I think a lot of the buildings were actually painted more than they're showing here. But I do like that they're showing the vibrancy and color of Roman life. It's not something you read in a textbook and you see these pictures of white marble buildings, this austere city, everyone walking around in white togas just was not at all how it was. Um, so they're showing that, and they're also, at the same time, bringing the life back into the city with all of these people. I mean, this is just a great way 
to really depict Rome as it was. <laughs> Pompey's playing to the crowd. All of you, this is my new wife, Cornelia. I was gonna say, they were showing the, the courtship between Pompey and Octavia, but in real life, uh, Octavia was never married to Pompey. Uh, and here we go. Maybe if you'd summoned a little charm instead of moping about like some torpid old she cow, this would never have happened. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Please, I was only speaking in anger. <laughs> that was quick. This is a political repudiation on account. Pompey and Caesar are enemies now. Maybe Glavius will take me back. We're well rid of him. She's quite a character. A girl from a good family can never be dishonored by a villainous little pleb like Pompey. I want him dead. Some of that Julii fire. Shall have. You know what's funny? Some of that Julii fire we can see from Octavia, Octavian. Uh, and Caesar certainly had that fire within him. But Caesar was far more merciful <laughs> than I think a lot of the people depicted here. <laughs> hey, there it is, the Eagle Standard. This is what the Romans leave behind. That is true. All right. And that is episode one of HBO's Rome. Uh, I had a really good time watching this. Um, I enjoyed it very much. And at the beginning, I said I was going to try and not to talk too much about the history, but I just feel like they did a great job presenting it. All the characters, Rome itself, the customs. I'm not an expert on the daily life of the regular Roman, but I feel like they were doing a really good job of that, and so I couldn't help <laughs> but stop and point it out. Um, a couple of things uh, I mentioned throughout this video I thought may have been a little over-exaggerated, and some of the events were certainly made up, but I think largely a pretty authentic portrayal of Rome at this time. And I think the characterization of these historical figures so far has been pretty on point. I mean, we're literally only one episode in, so I don't want to get ahead of myself. But I know this is a very well-regarded series, uh, and a lot of people love it as a depiction of Rome. Roman politics, Roman life. So yeah, I had a great time with this one. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, I hope I don't have too much trouble with the copyright on this reaction. Uh, I know it's going to take a lot more editing than usual, so we'll see how it turns out. Um, but if you want to see the entire reaction unedited, uh, and there is certainly a lot that you'll be missing if you're watching this uh, on YouTube, then please check out the Patreon, which is linked down below where you can see that and all unedited future reactions to HBO's Rome. Uh, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I certainly did, and I hope you're all having a good day today. Goodbye, everybody. See you next time.